The story of Joseph in the Bible is considered an inspiring story by many people. R.C. Sproul, for example, made a whole series on the life of Joseph. R.C. Sproul is a Calvinist, and Calvinists are generally not very inspirational in my book, but he still considers the story of Joseph rather inspirational. The reason for this is because the story represents a lot. If you haven't read the Bible story, and hopefully you have, in Genesis, Joseph is put into slavery, and then he stays in jail for 13 years, and finally he's released. But as he goes through each stage in life, he doesn't just sit there and do nothing. He works very hard and is known as a good overseer. And he keeps getting promoted, no matter how bad the situation. In fact, I went to this church around here called Reach Church, and they had an inspirational sermon that involved, in part, the Joseph story. They also used the David story, too. It does seem inspirational in a sense. Indeed, I find it inspirational. It shows that no matter how bad your circumstance is, you can always find a way out of it. No matter what you're in, if you do the right thing, you can win in the end. Let's hope, at least, that is the way things are. Now, sometimes I get rather cynical, and it doesn't seem like justice is reigning. It doesn't seem like the good guys win. It boils my blood when people say, you'll never get anywhere with a rotten attitude or if you do the right thing you don't have anything to worry about well in theory yes that's true but in reality sometimes if you do the right thing you get in trouble as rc sprawl noted in his commentary joseph denied the advances of a woman and instead of getting rewarded for it he got punished at least in the short term and sometimes I don't know about you, but I see similar things happening in my life. Now, obviously, most of us haven't been as punished as Joseph was. We haven't gone to prison for 13 years for our good deeds. But we have gotten punished in minor ways for doing the right thing, not for doing the wrong thing. It's one thing to not get rewarded for doing the right thing, but it's another thing completely to get punished for it. When you say, if you do the right thing, you have nothing to worry about, well, it's true maybe in the grand scheme, let's hope at least, but in the small scale, you can get punished all the time. It happens all the time. Just trust me on that if you've never done the right thing. If you've never gone against the crowd, if you've never took a stand, trust me. That's what can happen. A lot of people assume you don't have to fear authority if you do the right thing. Well, what if the authority is corrupt? It is utterly foolish to just assume somebody is decent because they have a blue uniform or if they're a judge with black robes or if they're a teacher or if they're a politician. That's utterly backwards. A lot of people actually feel that way. They may not say they feel that way, but they do feel that way. Think about it. I would not suggest that all authority figures are bad. That would be going to the opposite extreme. But it's important to not assume they're automatically good. And they might have bad agendas, as they do in many cases. They may be power hungry. And also sometimes it's just simple, honest mistakes. They may be paranoid from all their work as a police officer, so they're looking for crime everywhere. They see everyone as criminals. They're paranoid. So, if you're a good person, yes, bad things can happen to you, believe it or not. The old philosophical query, why do good things happen to bad people, has been countered with also, why do bad things happen to good people? That question bothers me more than why does bad things happen to good people. Why do bad people get away with their evil deeds? So, let's consider all this with the story of Joseph. On the surface, it doesn't look like those who harmed Joseph got into any trouble. His brothers didn't really get into any trouble. Now, you may say they were racked with guilt. Well, 
Some people don't experience guilt. There are some people who do bad things and they experience guilt later, and indeed that's a terrible thing. But some people just don't experience guilt, so there's no punishment there. His brothers didn't go to jail. Not even one day. What about that woman who falsely accused him? She didn't go to jail. Joseph was the one who went to jail. In the short term, definitely, the bad guys can win. All these people did the wrong thing and they didn't spend a day in jail. And Joseph went to jail for 13 years. It makes you wonder how often in this world of ours does something like that happen. Let us hope that good and justice can win in the end. Let us hope that there is a creator or at least some benevolent force, maybe karma, whatever you want to call it, that ensures that though in the short term evil may reign, good will win out in the end. We do see signs of this over time, so history can bear it out to some extent. Though, also, I'd like to point out, this is not entirely complete. How many people have gone to their graves doing bad things? How many people have yet to be vindicated for their good deeds or their innocence? It took Harry Marco Polo's, pardon the mispronunciation if I did so, a long time before he got vindicated. He was trying to prove Bernie Madoff did his bad deeds. Everyone doubted him. I watched the movie, I read his book, and it boiled my blood. I wonder how many other times that has happened. I've been in similar situations, now probably not quite as dramatic as his, but still, it boils my blood. So let us hope good will win in the end, and let us hope that we don't have to conclude Joseph is just a cynical story. If the atheists are right, then Joseph is a cynical story because given the situation, the people who did his bad deeds got no punishment. Really. Think about Bernie Madoff, Jerry Sandusky. If you look at it in an atheistic point of view, they really won because for 40 years or so, they got away with their bad deeds. So they got 40 years of pleasure and joy and then the last few years of their life, they got punishment. And then if there's nothing afterwards, then what does it matter, hey? Let us hope the story of Joseph is more than just cynical. Let us hope it shows that justice can reign. Now, I may not be a nice person, but I do want the bad guys to get punished. I'm not talking about the common people who do a bad thing here or there, but the people who dedicate their life to evil things. The people who think they can get away with it. The people who arrogantly think they can get away with it. Let us hope they will get punished. Let us hope good will reign in the end. Let us hope the story of Joseph is not just a cynical story.